And we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, Jordan Nelson, your host of Real Estate Pros on Lister Pros TV today in Las Vegas, Nevada with Sam Cohen of Rothwell Gorn. Thanks, for, Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and joining me on Real Estate Pros. Of course, thank you for inviting me. Awesome. So for those watching that don't know who you are, we'll give you a couple minutes to introduce yourself. Um, Sam Cohen, I'm a realtor over at Rothwell Gorn Companies. Uh, primarily, I do do a lot of residential real estate. Also um, do a lot of warehouse space in the downtown district, things like that as far as my commercial background. Okay, so so did you do commercial before you uh, got into real estate or do you did you do you've done you do commercial as well as residential? I, I do a little bit of both. Like literally right before I was oh, coming nice. down here, I was in the arts district uh, with a client and we were looking over a commercial lease right uh, inside of the arts district for basically an arts in installation business, which is kind of like what you see at the Bellagio where everybody's been taking all those cool pictures and everything with like right, those right. floating lanterns. Yeah. I have a client that does the same thing. So he's going to set something like that up downtown. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So what do you like working with more residential or commercial or both? I mean, both. I just kind of doesn't really matter, you know? I mean, the thing is with residential, that's great, is most of the time you're helping families either buy or sell their homes and you're helping them achieve all these different goals, especially with like first time home buyers who are so excited to get their house. And, you know, every right. little piece of it is like, it's, it's just like a next level of their life, you know what I mean? So they're taking the next step. So they like that a lot and I like being a part of it. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into commercial? Because I think that's something that maybe a lot of agents maybe not struggle with, but they're kind of intimidated by commercial, right? Like, oh, is it way more complex or? I don't, I don't know if it's, it is more complex, right? So I mean, like even with the commercial lease that I'm doing, you have to write up a letter of intent, which is literally a couple pages that you have to hand write. And then most of the contracts you have to have help from lawyers. So it's a little bit different. I wouldn't say that they're intimidated, but I would say that there's not a lot of brokerages that you know, target doing commercial real estate as much. And if you're not getting the proper training to do something like that, then you're probably not going to step into it. You're going to follow after whoever your role models are in the brokerage that you work at. And most of these people are working at, you know, their only residential real estate brokerages. Right. So you do, you, so you hang your license at Rothwell Gorn. So talk to us a little bit about why you chose that brokerage. Um, I mean, our brokerage is a smaller boutique brokerage. Um, we, primarily focus on just doing a lot of volume with very little people and everybody that works with us are you know friends that we grew up with things like that um, I've known Ryan and Richard Crichton who are my broker and my team lead for years long before I got into real estate and we were friends and Richard actually while we were out one day having lunch introduced the idea to for me to come work with him basically. And within three days I was in real estate school and then I kind of just made this huge leap and mm. changed career paths and got into this. Sure, so what, what, out of curiosity, what was your career prior to real estate? Um, I did restaurants. So I'd done some restaurant management primarily through the majority of my restaurant career. I was a waiter, um, focused a lot on doing fine wines and the sommelier and uh. things like that. So that was always a lot of fun and Honestly, in Las Vegas, if you're good at it, it's it's a career, right? You can make some good money doing it, but it's kind of a, it, you can only go so far, right? Even in restaurant management, it's like you'll work like a dog, and unless you're a managing partner of a restaurant or something like that, or a restaurant owner of a successful restaurant at that, not just a restaurant owner, because most restaurants fail, you know, you're not, you're not really making that much money, and you're bound by working for somebody else and their goals, where... Real estate was great for me to get into because I could become more goal oriented and, you know, work towards things that I wanted. Mm. So what are those things that, so how long have you been in real estate now? Three years. Okay. So what are those things that you're working on now? Cause we know that there's a lot of, you know, some people want to build a team or people want to pursue this or that. So what are, what are kind of your focuses here in real estate? Right now, uh, probably my biggest focus is, is breaking into the downtown market. Well, just warehouse space in general, kind of focusing on that. And I do want to continue to build my residential portfolio. I do do a substantial amount of deals for residential, 
So I like just kind of building that as well because I do enjoy it and it is kind of the staple of my career as well. But my goals are probably more short-term goals that I focus on. I focus on day-to-day -day goals. You know, what can I do each day? Things that I can control. And then I just kind of see where it leads me. I'm a huge person that believes in working my CRM, you know, focusing on attitude and how I'm going to allot my time. And I keep two short-term goals like that and things that are realistic and that I can control and then whatever comes from of it, obviously I know I've worked my hardest at whatever I'm doing and I'm completely content with it. Sure, so what are those things that you focus on daily? Because I think that's a smart idea you, you can have, oh, I wanna be a millionaire or whatever kind of goals or I wanna help X number of, or whatever that is. You know, I, if you break it down, you only have today. I hate it. What I hate, activities? I know? hate it when realtors tell me, you know, I'm gonna close 50 deals in a year. Like, well, how are you gonna do that? You're, you're just saying it. What are you gonna do that's different? How are you gonna apply yourself? Are you gonna, you know, are you gonna allot maybe certain amount of hours to read into different forms of marketing to how you can actually make some money work for you and put it towards to build more business? Um, you know, what are you gonna do at certain amount? I literally have a black book, old school black book, and I write my days out. You know what I mean? I go through it piece by piece by piece what I'm gonna do. Of course, I mean, you always get like, little things that jump up. I'll have a client, oh, I just saw this house, we need to go. I can't always exactly plan my day because it's not about me, it's about the client. So, you know, I, but I do my best, but I make sure even if I lost a couple hours that I allotted, then I'm just gonna move something because there's certain things like emails that I can always send out at 10, 11 at night, two in the morning, whenever I gotta work to, right, right. to get all of those goals done. But yeah, pretty much I focus on that. A CRM basically is just a database of everything that you need to follow up with that for the day uh, with your client and then I keep my black book and it just depends what I'm working on for that day. So on, on particular days when you have maybe d some downtime, what are those things that you're, do you gravitate more to like phone calls or doing open houses or what, what are those activities that are, that drive success day to day for you? I, I do like doing open houses. Um, I'll always go through my, my brokerages listings that we have and if I have a little bit of spare time, but I'm really big on analytics as well. Mm -hmm. I like reading through everything that's on the market, you know, knowing things like there's roughly about 10,000 homes on the market, 5,000 in escrow, how you would compare that to during the recession towards the boom, how the boom kind of affected last year and get to know trends and really what's going on mm -hmm. because I feel that that helps me be better at my job. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, also I like looking into marketing because obviously I do want to build more business. That's that's the goal, right? Is to build the business and how can you best do that? So you always want to look into anything new and try and beat the trend, you know? And as long as you're doing things like that, I feel like you'll always grow as well as just trying to be consistent with everything else that I normally do. Sure. So it sounds like, you know, being a resource for your clients, that education piece and, you know, cuz obviously as clients, they don't know the market and what's all going on, so keeping yourself educated and knowing you know, how are we looking today compared to the recession back in 07, 08? Um, you know, because I think that probably comes up a lot. You know, we've been going up for so many years. Is it going to crash? You know, I've heard that a few times. Yeah, I mean, so a lot of people all say that it's going to crash again. It's going to crash again. I'm not really going to go into that. I do actually understand economics to a certain level, but I don't want to get into something that I'm not fully educated on and kind of speak about it. But as far as a crash coming again soon, I highly doubt it. I don't see why there would be a crash coming anytime soon. You know, the market's flourishing. Las Vegas definitely has a lot of different things going on. Um, few tech companies coming out here. Google's building a plant. Tesla's building a plant. Um, Tony Shea's been out here for years preaching it, right, with Zappos. So we're starting to get a lot more businesses like that, which is something that Las Vegas has never had because we've been primarily built around uh, service industry, right? And if that dies out, primarily conventions, we are one of the biggest convention capitals of the world. So if we're not doing that, basically our city would die down. Where now we're becoming a little bit more self-efficient. Of course, we have the sports teams coming here, which has proven to be successful. So now we're trying to, starting mm -hmm. to show ourselves more as a major city, as well as there's no other you know, city or state that are failing right now either. America as a whole kind of seems to be doing well economically. So I don't know where a downturn would come from, but sure. you know, maybe there's people that would have some information that I right, don't. Right, right. And then you also mentioned a focus of yours being marketing. So what are, what, what types of marketing and what, what, what 
marketing are you finding that is effective? Um, lately, I've been learning a little bit more about social media marketing, doing things like that, getting up a business page with that. Other than that, going through different avenues, trying to find stats on how Zillow's doing, Realtor.com's doing, and then there's other avenues that I've been using that actually I will not mention uh, that has been providing me with different leads and resources of home buyers from out of state. Mm. Gotcha, because that's probably a, a decent sized market for Las Vegas. You're getting a lot of people coming from out of state. And I think in a previous interview, like, uh, do you guys have snowbirds here too, where people kind of move down from up north during the winter months? To get I, I don't know much about that. Oh, that's okay. kind of a question I can't answer. I'm gotcha, not too gotcha, sure. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, um, so if somebody is looking to to um, get into real estate, what what um, advice would you give them to be able to find success in real estate early? Obviously, you've been in the business, you found success, you're three years in. You know, somebody that just got out of real estate school, you know, how, what would you recommend they do to, to be successful? They need to understand it's a business. Um, average business takes about five years to build. People think I'm going to get a license, I'm going to tell people that I'm going to get a license, and people are just going to call me, I'm going to put a couple posts on Facebook. It's not really that easy. You know, you have to generate a business and have a cycling, you know, uh, pipeline that is going to kind of keep closing deals, right? And it's not something that's easy to come by. It's something that you have to work on. So possibly keep a second job. I did it through my first year, but then I had great success. I didn't have to continue to do it. I was able to step away from it right away. But it was a great crutch for me. And I know other agents that have done the same thing for a few years, but they need to look at it as a business, you know, and they say the average business, you know, you don't get out of the red until you're anywhere from three to five years in, right? So you got to put the work in and expect that it's not going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. But as long as you can come in with the realistic expectations and work through it, it is only a matter of time, right? As long as you work a lot of hours and you stay focused. Mm -hmm. And really that's the only advice I can give. I don't know if there's some necessary special trick. I would just say sure. be ready to put the hours in and be patient. Work hard, uh, absolutely. Hard work and be patient, those are big things. I think a lot of people get out of the business so fast because they thought, like you said, a couple posts, oh, where's the where's the business? Does yeah, the and then they up? hit a button on realtor.com and then they have some shark that's spending, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for leads in a you know six-month period that knows everything about real estate. And even though they know you and you're a friend, you may lose that client to this other person on the phone. Right. You know, they know you're a new agent. This person has credibility just because they came off of Realtor.com or wherever they found them at, right? And right, it's right. It, it's kind of a little bit of a different uh, business in that way, right? Mm -hmm. And it, you're dealing with people's money, probably one of the largest purchases they're ever going to make. So they want to make sure they trust the person. As sad as it is to say, sometimes it's not always the new agent that is your friend for 15 years, you know? Mm-hmm. And also, uh, with so many agents in them, I wanted to ask you, with so many agents out there, I think somebody mentioned there's close to 20,000 agents here in the Vegas area. Maybe yeah. I'm off. I don't know. I think what, that's where I'm accurate. But what makes you different than all the other agents? Or why do people choose to work with you? I keep asking myself that question every day. I'm not <laughs> too like, sure. No, ah, I don't yeah. know. Um, I mean, you just got to put the work in. And I think that you learn a lot just through transactions. And as you're just closing transactions, you keep meeting people and you keep working on it and your knowledge grows and just the way you deal with things. I think a big thing with me is just more my attitude. I'm always cool with my clients. I'm very patient. I'm never pushy with them. You know, I want to make the experience about them. And I think that that is a huge attribute that makes people want to continue to work with me and why I get so many referrals and things like that. Sure. Awesome. Well, if somebody watching this is interested and you have you uh, represent them as a buyer or seller, how do people get a hold of you? Um, you can give me a call, phone number 702-884-8276, or you can go ahead and email me at sam at rothwellgorant.com, or you could even just look me up on a social media at Sam Cohen. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sam, so much for taking time My out of your pleasure. busy day. Yeah, thank joining you. Joining me, and we will see you guys on the next episode.